We're all familiar with the idea of inheritance and DNA. We're all familiar with the idea that the environment affects the development of the child. What we now realise is that these two are much more intertwined than we've known before. That the environment actually affects the DNA. And this is the new exciting science of epigenetics. The mice are agouti mice. One is kind of really much bigger and yellow and the other one's much smaller and brown. Neither have a disease, um, they're the same species, but obviously they look really different. They've got the same DNA, they are genetically identical, so there's no reason genetically why they should have these differences. Well, what we now realise is that changes to the DNA are possible, so-called epigenetic changes. That means on top of genetics. The DNA has the instructions for how we function and how we're going to develop. Um, but the epigenetics will change whether or not it's red and how it's red. So typically when we think of DNA we think of a double helix but actually DNA is tightly called around proteins called histones and depending on the spacing between these histone proteins that will determine whether or not the machinery that's going to read the DNA is able to access it. So obviously if you've got really nice spacing the DNA in between the histones is able to be read but if it's bunched together, you just can't get at it. And there's no way that the machinery can read the DNA and interpret the instructions that it contains. And what happens is that new chemical groups are added to the DNA and these control whether the gene is turned on or off, or if it's turned on, how much it's turned on. The methyl group sits on the DNA and essentially blocks it from being read so that the gene is inactive. The only difference is what their mothers ate during pregnancy. If you feed the pregnant mother mouse a normal diet, then uh, the gene which is responsible for the yellow coat colour, that's still switched on and being read. But if you feed the pregnant mother mouse a diet rich in supplements, which have lots of methyl donors, which block this gene from being red. That means that it has the brown colour and it's much leaner and it's less likely to suffer from things like diabetes, obesity and cancer. Epigenetics is still quite a young science and there's a lot we don't understand about it. But we do understand that these marks to the DNA can last right through a person's lifetime. It's not nature or nurture, it's nurture affecting nature in a way that we're starting to understand at the molecular level. Genetics is not all of the story in terms of how a child will develop. Environmental influences can affect how the baby develops in the womb um, via epigenetic changes and can therefore change what will happen to that child in adulthood. The actual structure of the brain can be altered by the environment in the womb and the environment in the womb can in turn be affected by the mother's chemistry. So if her stress hormones go up, for example, this can increase the risk of her child having problems later. Because we now know that the time in the womb is so important, it would suggest that we really need to take care of our pregnant mums in order to take care of the future babies. Mm -hmm.